David, my first question would have to be, um, what uh, is your masterclass going to be about on the 9th of May? Uh, talk about big ideas. The first big idea is what I call the new rules of marketing and PR. And that's the idea that any company or any person can create content on the web and that content can serve as marketing. So the content can be video-based information, it can be uh, text-based information like blogs, it can be social networking, and that serves as a way to generate attention because people are looking for your kinds of uh, businesses on the search engines and because people are sharing content on the web. The second big idea I'm going to talk about is real-time marketing and PR and the idea of real-time is to engage the market right now when people are looking rather than on your time schedule you engage the market on their time schedule all right so uh, we've been talking for months years now about the importance of social media and how these are going to impact companies but at this point in time uh, mid-2013, um, many say that it's just to be there. They do it just to be there and they don't actually get value from it. So what do you think about that? Well, I think that most organizations are not using social media in the right way because most, social, most companies are using social media kind of the way that you describe the question is they do it just to be there. They say, yes, we're on Twitter, so they check the box. Yes, we're on Facebook, they check the box. And they say, they think, well, as, as long as I'm on Twitter and as long as I'm on Facebook, I am doing social media. Yeah. And of course, you know that. The, the idea of using social media is about two very, very powerful ideas. One of the powerful ideas is it allows companies to get people to share their content. So if you create a great video, if you create a great blog post, if you create a great infographic, then people will share that on the web using social media. They might tweet it to their friends, they might talk about it on Facebook. So what it does is it gets your content to people that you don't already even know. That's, the mo that's very important. The second thing about social networks where it allows two-way instant communications between you and your customers. So if people are interested in what your products or services are, you can communicate with them right now. Uh, if somebody is talking about you, you can engage with that person. I think that a big mistake that companies are doing with social media is they use it as one-way communications, from only from the company to other people. But if you use it as two-way communications, then you can engage your marketplace and you can interact with people and that becomes a really valuable thing for your brand. So the reason that people are skeptical is because they're not using it the right way. Um, you know, there have been uh, quite a few great examples of bad uh, CRM cases um, on social media. Um, and it almost it almost seems that the people who are supposed to communicate on those channels don't fully understand their capacity to get viral when it, you know when it, we are talking about bad things happening you know so it almost seems that like it gets easily out of control why do you think that happens and what would be a solution to that things about social media and the web is that things have a tendency to sh to spread. I mean that's one of the one of the great things about the web is that things have a tendency to spread and that thing about your business it can go from to another fantastic. But the same thing is true of something that might be negative. That also has the potential to go one person to another. So I think one of the best things to do if you're in a situation where something is happening that maybe isn't so good for your company is just to be honest and just to react to it and just to engage with people. You know, what people react to are humans. And if you, if you react like a human and if you need to say, I'm sorry, that's good, 
if you need to provide a clarification, that's okay. Never get defensive. Never say, oh, 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 everybody else is wrong and I am right. You know, but, but instead focus on, on um, being out there like a human being, just like you were talking to a friend at a, at a cafe over coffee. Uh, and share what you're thinking. Um, and these are things will blow over quickly if something negative happens. And you can frequently turn something that's negative into something that's positive because if people see that you're human and that you're reacting in a positive way, that can be a really good thing for you and for your brand. Um, so do you think we're still working on getting there with uh, what the Clue Chain Manifesto is teaching us? Or do you think we've already reached that point? I think if you look at it from the big picture, that this, the, the communication revolution that we're in right now is taking 30 years to happen. You know, Clue Train was about 10 years ago. And between 10 years ago and maybe 20 years from now, this is the revolution that's happening right now. I look at this revolution as being very similar to the revolution that happened 550 years ago. That was the invention of the printing press. When the printing press was invented, it brought humanity out of the Middle Ages, out of medieval period, and into the Renaissance period in history because all of a sudden people could read for themselves. The same thing is happening right now. There's over six billion people on the, in the world that have access to mobile phones. And because of that, we now have this ability for one person to reach another, practically everybody in the whole world, six out of seven people in the world. And this is a, a revolution. So we're in the early stages of the revolution and we're gonna continue to progress through the next 20 years in this revolution. And the ideas of Clue Train, the ideas that I've talked about, the ideas that I've talked about, yes, they're here today, but not for everybody because not everybody is doing it. But over time, this is the way we're going to communicate. It's going to be two-way. It's not just going to be one way like print communication was. It's going to be two-way. And we're in the middle of that revolution right now. I know this question often um, makes people a bit defensive, uh, especially when I ask it to uh, people who work for communication agencies or people who work for uh, big brands. But do you believe that the communication part of like the social media communication part should stay inside the company or it would be better to delegate? I think that social media should be inside the company. And I think that the people who are doing social media should be former journalists, trained journalists, just like you. <laughs> Because a journalist knows how to create content. A journalist knows how to tell a story. A journalist understands real-time communication. And a journalist is the person as the social media uh, a person within a company. I also believe that in companies, everybody should be empowered to be able to use social media. Everyone should be allowed to use Twitter and Facebook and other services at work. For example, at IBM, every, every, every single employee is allowed to use social media, and I think that's the best way to do it. But there still should be somebody within a company who's in charge of the corporate social media effort. And I think the best people to do that are not advertising people, not are journalists, people who have been magazine, radio, television, newspaper journalists, and they're the best people to create content. You know, um, we were talking about the uh, economical crisis and how the economical crisis not only brings... Um, a decrease in the uh, economical and commercial um, field, but also in the creativity field. It almost yeah. seems that it, it's there's something lacking there. So where do you think that's that's going? I mean, you talked about a very long uh, time span for this revolution to happen. How much do we have to wait for creativity to bloom again? <laughs> There's a lot of creativity out there. I see a lot of it out there. I think that 
creativity when it comes to creating in content on the web becomes a little bit different type of creativity. It's creativity of understanding very well the people that you're trying to reach, your audiences. And it used to be with television advertising that you were that you only had a few ways to reach people and they were required to watch what you were doing because there were only a several television stations and there were not very many other things that people could do. But now with the web, there's millions and millions and millions of channels that they can communicate to. Focusing on the, your audiences in a day than we in the past. The, I think creativity is still there, but I think it's a different form of creativity. I think the creativity is how do you understand your buyers very, very well, and how do you reach them with great content? And, uh, and, and I think that actually is happening a lot. But, but it's not every company, because most companies are still in this idea of talking about their products and services. The, the way that creativity works is you think but most companies, when they're talking about something, are only talking about their products and services, and that just doesn't work. You know, um, one of the first rules, you know, when it comes to uh, talking about a brand and engage your users and your and your consumers, and your clients, is to tell a story. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there have been some examples of that, but my my question would be in your experience what would be the worst thing that can backfire big time on a company when doing social media one of the biggest things i've seen that's backfired and i've said a number of are companies that try to take advantage of a negative story so for example um in the last um few months I can think of several negative stories that have happened where I live in Boston. I live in Boston. And there was the Boston Marathon bombing that happened to us um, a about uh, a month ago, for example. And about six months ago, we had a terrible hurricane called Hurricane Sandy that happened to us in Boston. And in both of those cases, the biggest social media backlashes where one companies tried to take advantage of that negative uh, story, you know, the story where people died and tried to take advantage of making that part of their social media efforts. Um, you know, a, a couple of clothing companies tried to make a s special sale related to Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> Terrible, right? And, um, and other companies were trying to take advantage of the marriage. So I think um, that it's very, very, very dangerous whenever there's a negative story for a brand to try to take advantage of it. My last question would have to be, what would be the biggest and most valuable advice you would give a company when it comes to getting into the new marketing era? I think it's a combination of several things. The, the most important thing is to understand your, I call them buyer personas. Understand your buyer personas. Understand the people that you're trying to reach and then create information especially for them. And the difference is that don't just instead focus on the people you're trying to reach. And then, and you said it earlier, it's about creating stories. So once you understand the people that you're trying to reach, your job is how can you un create a story or, or several stories that are going to be interesting for them. And that is the best way to generate attention on the web. And unfortunately, not very many companies are doing that because most companies have been talking about their own products and their own services for a long time. And that, and that just doesn't work so well. All right. So, David, thank you very much for being with us today. And I hope... Uh, oh. uh, I hope your, uh, your masterclass goes very, very well tomorrow. Well, thank you very much, Marie. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. I'm really looking forward to it. It's been fun to be here in Italy, and, and I'm looking forward to a masterclass tomorrow.